Okay, so before we go into uh, talking about the No Start Cold complaint, uh, I did want to sincerely thank you guys for clicking on this video. Uh, please like and subscribe. Uh, click on the link below for more information about our company. Uh, we really appreciate the, the interest that you take, not only in us, but in the diesel community in general. So let's talk a little bit now about a no start cold complaint. And for clarification purposes, uh, I'm not uh, talking about ambient temperature. If you live in a portion of the country where it's routinely 15 degrees in the morning, uh, you're probably going to have some start issues with the diesel because diesels hate the cold. Um, make sure your glow plug system is up to date. Um, you know, you're probably going to have to plug in your block heater on certain cold mornings. Um, make sure you have good anti-gel fuel conditioner. Um, those type things. If you live in those areas and you're driving a diesel, most likely you already know that. Um, what I'm talking about is a uh, no start cold where the engine is not up to operating temperature. And we're going to talk about now um, the six most common um, causes of this and what corrective action that you can do. So uh, no start cold complaint. Uh, one of the first um, common things uh, that if you're not doing, you need to be doing, and that is routinely change your fuel filter. Uh, in our experience, we've interacted with customers who some have not changed their fuel filter in years. Um, when you inhibit the flow of the fuel coming to the pump, it can cause problems. Um, you'll probably also experience other problems such as low power and just the general sluggishness. Um, when you pull the fuel filter off, make sure you examine it. If you see any metal flakes in there, that's a little bit of a cause for concern. Um, but you want to routinely change that. Now, everybody has a different opinion about um, when you should change your fuel filter. Obviously, you know, first and foremost, uh, refer to uh, the engine manufacturer and what they suggest. In the absence of that, what I tell customers, you know, every third oil change, Go ahead and change your fuel filter. Also, always keep an extra fuel filter in your truck. And let me tell you why. If you're the type driver that you're buying your fuel from a variety of places, maybe you travel a lot and you, and you, and you can't buy from the same location every time, what I recommend to customers is always try to buy from a location that turns their fuel pretty regular. And that's always someone close or near to the interstate. But if you're in you know, some small town and they only have one station, a uh, guy doesn't sell a lot of diesel, that fuel could potentially sit there for a year or more. Uh, and you always want to have a spare fuel filter simply in case you get a bad dose of fuel. It won't leave you stranded on the road. You know you're going to need it anyway, and it's way cheaper than a tow bill. The, the second uh, potential cause of a, a no start cold complaint, uh, and it, we're seeing a lot of it, is air and fuel. And um, there's a couple of ways that you can check for this. The first thing is to do what we talked about previously. Pull your fuel filter, even if you recently changed it, after your truck has set for four or more hours. If your fuel filter is down, uh, that means that you've got air coming in your system. Now, how I describe this to some of our customers, if if I were to take a garden hose and submerge it in a bucket of water and put my thumb over the end of the hose and pull the hose partially out, water would stay inside uh, the hose. But the minute I wiggled my thumb at all and allowed any air to get in there, gravity takes over and all the, all the water goes to back into the bucket. Same thing happens with your fuel system. If you have any air getting in the system, uh, it's going to allow that fuel to flow back to the tank or to the lowest point, and you're going to have to essentially reprime the system every time uh, that you uh, that your truck sits for a period of time. Now we do have a temporary fix for this, and this is more of a test than a solution. Uh, no mechanic out there likes to troubleshoot air uh, because there's so many um, variables to look for. This is a one-way flow valve that we sell here at Diesel Care. Uh, again, I recommend keeping a couple of these in your toolbox, maybe your glove box. You never know when you'll need one. And what I recommend to customers who are experiencing a hard to start cold accompanied with white smoke, that is the telltale sign that you've got air in the system potentially is when you have the white smoke 
and the hardest start. And what I recommend to people to do is to find um, a, a bit of rubber line before your fuel filter. You're going to cut that line in two. You're going to install this one-way flow valve with a couple of hose clamps. And what that's going to do is that's going to inhibit the fuel from going back to the tank. So you're still going to have to prime it a little bit. This is a temporary fix. This is not meant to, to be a, a complete uh, repair. But this will, one, it'll get your truck where you need to go. Uh, it'll buy you a little bit of time until you have the time to sit down and go through the system. Um, so you can get this on our website, uh, again, at dieselcare.store. And it will help. Uh, help you along until you address the problem where we see most failures in, in uh, compromised fuel systems is that filter base um, and you'll probably want to look at changing that um, when you're addressing the air and fuel system. Okay so the the third potential cause of a, a no start cold complaint is a plugged return and um, on the injection pump here then again this is the one fitted to the Ford um, this valve right here um, is a valve that maintains housing pressure. If you were to um, open it up, uh, if you had the ability to open up this valve, there's a glass ball and a spring in here, and that spring is designed to maintain a certain housing pressure within the injection pump. Um, if you want to test if it's a plugged return, it's very simple. You just loosen this line. You don't even have to take it off. If you can relieve that pressure enough and the truck starts, then you know you've got a, a plugged system from your return uh, back to your filter base and you'll want to address that. But I can't tell you the number of customers who have bought an injection pump from our company. They put it on and they call us and they say, well, we have the same problem. And then of course I, you know, I ask them to loosen the return, the truck starts and um, you know, I hate to say it, but they've probably wasted a little bit of money uh, needlessly when they could have just either changed this valve if it's bad and or um, addressed uh, the issue before they put an injection pump on. Before we move on, uh, my cameraman reminded me that I needed to do a shameless plug. Uh, we were talking about air in the, uh, in the system and how to address it. Um, we here at Diesel Care, we have a couple of kits that uh, can help you for both Ford and Chevrolet. This is for the Ford and International. Uh, this is a return line kit, which will address a lot of air issues. There's also a supply side kit, uh, which comes with the grommets and the things um, that are needed for a pump installation, but you sometimes you could just purchase the kit to address those air issues. So there'll be uh, information about those below. Please click on those if you're interested. And we appreciate it. So now we're going to move into a little bit more of a complexity um, uh, of everything we've done up to now. Pretty much any of you guys out there are pretty comfortable doing. Uh, pretty simple, basic stuff. From here on, it, it's a little bit more complex, uh, but if you kind of used to doing uh, your own mechanic work and, and or you just want to delve into it, um, then this portion's for you. Um, we're going to be talking now about uh, some internal pump parts, um, primarily this solenoid. Um, commonly referred to as a shutoff solenoid, uh, this actually, this solenoid is what we call an energized to run solenoid. It's at rest position, which is what it's in now. Um, is the shutoff position. When you energize this, this arm draws in and holds and basically gets out of the way of the metering valve, which I have an example of here. And this valve, you'll see it has a notch in it. And what it does is the solenoid at rest position closes that notch port to where no fuel can go in. And that's why you have, uh, uh, the, have it shutting off. So you could essentially remove the solenoid, plug the top cover, and your truck would run, you just never be able to shut it off. So we're going to uh, delve a little further. Uh, now this would involve, right now we're going to talk about how to determine if the shutoff solenoid is bad. There's a simple test that you'll need uh, probably six foot of 10 gauge wire and a couple of alligator clips. And what you're going to do is you're going to, uh, on one side, attach it to the positive side of the battery. 
and then you're going to remove the wiring connector on your injection pump and you're going to touch that to the solenoid. And while this test is not a go-no-go, -no -go, what I mean is we can, by determining that there's no audible sound coming out, we can pretty much conclude the solenoid is bad. But if we hear something in there, we can't necessarily assume that it's good. So I want to make that distinction. This is not a, a test where it's, it's definite one way or another. Um, if you hear something, you need to delve further. If you don't hear anything, then it's time to change the solenoid and or the injection pump. I have some examples here of uh, some solenoids and some top covers. Um, very simply, when you're um, testing your shutoff solenoid, if you hear something audible but it's still a, a no start complaint, uh, you may want to consider removing the top cover. And in order to do that, there's three screws that hold it. The cover slips off just like it is here. Um, you will want to have available to you a new top cover gasket, which goes in here. Uh, some people can reuse them. Sometimes you get lucky with that, but uh, if you damage it getting it out, you don't want to sit there waiting for four or five days for what essentially looks like a rubber band. So what you're going to do at that point is you're going to pull the top cover off and you'll begin to examine it. A um, couple things to look for. One, uh, you want to look for any metal uh, that might be around uh, the solenoid uh, because the solenoid is essentially a magnet. Uh, what it does is any metal that is in the fuel system will get attracted to that and it'll look almost like a gray uh, kind of grease with maybe a little glitter in it. Uh, if you see that, um, you can shut this video off. You need an injection pump because that metal's coming from the pump. It's post filter. Um, so that's the first thing you want to do is you want to examine it. And what that metal will do is it'll cause this plunger right here to not fully engage. So you'll hear the audible click. Uh, that's this part uh, trying to move in but the plunger, because of the metal, is not allowing it full travel and that's why you're having the no start complaint. But if you don't see metal, what you can do um, is now that you have the top cover off is go ahead and test operation. Now again, you're going to need another uh, piece of wire with two alligator clips because you're going to need to ground this. Um, so you're going to ground the top cover, you're going to touch the uh, 12 volts to the shutoff lead, and you should see this move almost instantaneously. Um, it, uh, if it delays in any way, uh, the solenoid is bad. Um, so you, you want to perform this test while you're there. Um, you also want to look down inside the ejection pump. Uh, you're going to see this metering valve down in one side. Um, you're going to look for rust, uh, contamination, uh, fuel varnishing. Uh, if your truck sits up a lot, uh, the fuel will start to get uh, brown and sometimes sticky. Um, that's where you definitely need to address fuel conditioner, which I've got an example here, uh, another shameless plug. But this gives you a chance to see inside the injection pump. If you see rust, if you see excessive contamination, uh, you might want to consider going ahead and uh, swapping the injection pump out. Uh, if for whatever reason you can't do it at the time, go ahead and put your healthy dose of fuel conditioner uh, into the pump while you've got the top cover open. Uh, maybe it'll help free some stuff up. Uh, but if you determine it's the, the shutoff solenoid, uh, you can uh, replace just the solenoid. It's a very simple procedure. Uh, you can purchase this from our company. Uh, we also sell complete top covers um, where we can build the top cover for you and send it to you and then you send us your old one. Um, one side note because I get asked this a lot, this second solenoid that's in the top cover, this is uh, what's called a cold start advanced solenoid and that uh, leads me kind of into the next segment of potential hard start cold issues. And 
the shut, this solenoid operates extremely differently than the shutoff solenoid. While this is an energized to run, this is a veritable voltage solenoid, which means this tab here should have 11 and a half volts coming to it when the engine's cold. And then that voltage should gradually drop uh, as the motor heats up. And when you get to operating temperature, you should have zero voltage here. So you'll want to check um, the shutoff solenoid as a potential problem. Uh, the cold start advance can be a potential problem. Um, we don't see as many failures in it, but while you're checking your system out, go ahead and just give that a quick uh, check with your voltmeter and make sure that it's working properly. So in summation, uh, this video has been uh, about troubleshooting a no start complaint, uh, and we hope this information has been uh, useful to you. Um, if you do, in fact, determine that you have a uh, potential pump problem, um, first off, reach out and call us. Uh, if you have any concerns before you pull your pump, um, if you want to confirm some things, uh, our customer service department can put you in touch with uh, the, a technician who can pretty much answer any question that you have about it. Um, for those of you who determine you do need a pump, uh, we offer both an exchange on most applications. Um, and for those of you who want to have uh, to keep your truck original and have your pump rebuilt, we offer a rebuilt service as well. So if you want to if you want us to rebuild your pump or you just want to get an exchange, you can reach out to our customer service department and they can help you. They can also help you with anything that we've uh, offered in this video. Uh, they can give you uh, price and availability. Um, we hope that uh, this has been informative and we hope that uh, we'll be a part of the solution to your problems. So once again, to all you guys out there in the diesel community, uh, we really appreciate you. We appreciate you uh, taking an interest in this video. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. Uh, if you have any suggestions about future videos, you can uh, make that suggestion below. You can reach out to us uh, on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and all those other social bubbles. Um, we, uh, we'd love to hear from you. If you have uh, any questions, you can always reach me and my staff at 1-800-961-9290 or you can go to our website dieselcare.store. Again, thanks a lot. We look forward to seeing you again on our next video.